we the congregation of Concordia Lutheran Church greet you and wish you a happy Palm Sunday as we uh, begin Holy Week. And this is the day that the Lord Jesus appeared into the temple. So the tradition is on Palm Sunday, churches, there's actually palms waiting at our church now, although our doors have to be closed because of uh, the pandemic, is we would get palms and be able to wave them just as uh, the early people did when Jesus came into town. In Palm Sunday, from the New Testament, it quotes the Old Testament by saying, Hosanna in the highest. And that word, Hosanna, means please save us. Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and marks the start of Holy Week, the final days of his earthly ministry. And this is a beautiful picture of people uh, making a procession outside in the streets, but that's not happening today because we have to stay away from one another and be... Uh, isolated so that the disease, the coronavirus, won't spread. But we look forward to celebrating like this again, where we can be together and worship and enjoy freedom. So the Palm Sunday account uh, it, in one place is found in John chapter 12. It says, The next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And in part, these were excited uh, followers of Jesus. Some of them had seen Lazarus raised from the dead by Jesus four days after he'd been buried. And many had seen all the things that he had done. So why were all these crowds in, in uh, Jerusalem? Well, in Exodus 23, God's people were commanded that three times in the year you shall keep a feast to me. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. This is the first one. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God. So they would make the pilgrimage from all over the world if they could. And the population of Jerusalem would just expand and explode from all the pilgrims coming up to Jerusalem. Passover was the very first day of the first feast of the year, and this was springtime, followed by seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In Isaiah 2, verses 2 through 3, the prophet Isaiah prophesies it shall come to pass in the latter days, and that's almost always looking to the what we call eschatology, the end of the world, or the beginning of the new heaven and new earth. In the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it, and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion, and that's the mountain, shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And the scriptures pointed to Jesus coming to his temple, but it also points to him returning when he will come back. And all the nations in the new heaven and new earth will, will pour out to learn and to, to worship him. So in the Psalms, and we're going to look at a, a Psalm 118 specifically at the end, but there were a whole bunch of Psalms of what we call the Songs of Ascents. Psalms of Ascents. In other words, Psalms when the people were making their pilgrimage into Jerusalem and going up in elevation, walking up to where the temple was at the top of the hill. And they would pray and they would sing these different songs. Psalm 120 is the first song of ascent. And it says, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me, Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips, from a deceitful tongue. So there were songs and prayers of repentance, of forgiveness, 
of asking God to help them change and help us change. Psalm 121 is another song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And these they would be worshiping and singing and chanting these psalms and, and uh, saying them as they went up the hill, marching into Jerusalem. Just a little commercial break. Uh, I had one opportunity to have a trip into Israel and uh, towards the end of the trip and with some very beloved people in our congregation we were on the bus and uh, finally we were coming up into Jerusalem and coming up the hill on the road and the tour guide uh, Sippy she put on a, a song about Jerusalem the golden there's so many songs that are written about Jerusalem and it truly was a wonderful experience to go up to the mountain of the Lord, to Mount Zion, and to be in Jerusalem, where Jesus walked. Psalm 122 says, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go up to the mount house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Psalm 123, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Psalm 124, another song of ascents. If it had not been the Lord... Who was on our side, and it continues. Psalm 125, a song of ascents. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. And it recalls to me actual songs that were written with these words as the mountains surround Jerusalem, beautiful song of going up to Jerusalem and, and uh Come, let us go up from Isaiah's another song. Psalm 126, a song of sense. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. And that's we can relate to that in some way now. We, we didn't go through the exile and the punishment they went through when their whole nation was destroyed. But boy, when we get out of this uh, lockdown with this pandemic all over the world, this virus is just spreading and, and killing so many people, it's going, and God restores our fortunes. We're going to be like those who dream. I could go on, but you can see that this, the songs of uh, Ascents include Psalms 120 through 134. And I would encourage you, if you would like to observe these psalms during Holy Week, it would be a, a appropriate amount of psalms to to be uh, studying and and praying so on this day in palm sunday jesus arrived they recognized him as the king of israel because he had healed the sick he had raised the dead he had fulfilled uh, the prophecies about the messiah many of them had seen lazarus who was now alive who was dead walking in the streets he cast out demons. He proclaimed the day of the Lord. He came to save. Hosanna. In Matthew chapter 21, it says, Most of the crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And here's a picture depicting Jesus riding into Jerusalem with all the excitement and the palm branches and the cloaks and the clothes that have been laid on the ground to welcome him, like ro rolling out the red carpet for royalty for the king. Now when we jump from Matthew 21, we were just looking at to Matthew 24, we see Jesus starting to talk about eschatology which means the study, the biblical study of the end times. And in verse 3, his disciples ask him, what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? In other words, they knew that he was going to be coming in power and glory and majesty, what we call the second coming of, of, of Christ. And he will come. And that's why, whether it's a plague or a pandemic or anything going on in the world that's out of... Uh, 
the normal. We start wondering, is this the end times? Is this the time when he will come and conclude the end times and begin the new heaven and the new earth? But back to Matthew 23, this first coming on Palm Sunday was not a happy reception of Jesus at all. He was rejected, he was mocked, he would end up being crucified. And this is what he spoke in Matthew 23, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not see your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And most of Jerusalem was not saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you've been brought up in the church and raised as a Christian, you, you could have memorized the Lord's Prayer, in which we pray, Thy kingdom come. And when we look deeply into it, we can. Uh, Luther gives a perspective on it. He says, The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. In other words, a personal individual group coming of the kingdom to us through faith, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through his word. In other words, it's what I speak of as a revival, a renewal, that we open our hearts and we pray thy kingdom come because the kingdom has the king. Jesus is the king of over all creation and we ask him to come to us also. Matter of fact, Revelation 22, 20 through 21 are the last words of the Bible. And this is what they say. Jesus says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Come Lord Jesus is a prayer. It's a prayer of confidence. It's a prayer of hope. It's a prayer knowing that of his forgiveness and his grace. We're not afraid of his coming. We pray for his coming. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. And there's a painting of a door uh, without a handle on it. And Jesus standing outside and knocking. And it's up to us to open that door, not to reject him, not to turn him away, but say, come, Lord Jesus, come to us, come into our lives, our hearts. So there was the Palm Sunday rejection. How often... Would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not? On our own, we don't have the capabilities of choosing Jesus and making a choice for him. That can only be enabled by the Holy Spirit, because the scriptures say that uh, in our natural state we are enemies of God that the things of God are foolishness to us. But God the Holy Spirit comes through his word and through the invitation, and he asks us to be gathered to him under his wings and under his protection. We can, in our sinful nature, reject him. But God puts out the invitation with the power of the Holy Spirit to open our hearts to receive him. John 1, 10 through 12 says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him. This is speaking of Jesus. The world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive them. Some did, but most did not. John continues to say, 
this Palm Sunday reception, which would be a beautiful thing to do, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, to receive him is just another way of saying to believe in his name. He gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not, uh, not, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we pray, and when we pray this pray Hosanna, we're actually praying a prayer from Psalm 118. In the actual Hebrew, it's Hoshia Na, which we translate as Hosanna. And what it means is to save us. That is a wonderful prayer any day. But today, if he speaks to your heart, do not harden your heart, but open and in return pray to him, the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, save us. So we ask you, Lord Jesus, to save us from our sins. Save us from this sinful world. Lord, we pray that you save us in every way, body, soul. We pray for your salvation and your protection during this plague. But most of all, we thank you that we know that this life is not everything in any way. But you give eternal life. And Jesus, we thank you that you promised, John 5, 24. You said, I guarantee you, amen, amen, I say unto you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. So, Lord, we thank you that we have eternal life by faith the moment we believe and thereafter. And no one can snatch us out of your hand. In your wonderful name, the King of Israel, the Lord God of heaven and earth, the maker of heaven and earth, Jesus, the Son of God, we pray. Amen. <laughs>